I wanted to talk about healthcare real quick because it's back in the back in the news these days. I just wanted to um, I wanted to give I, I wanted to give Taylor and and Kyle an opportunity to sell me on why the profit motive should dictate healthcare in the United States. Why 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 do we why do we decide why did we decide that the profit motive isn't appropriate in governing <clears throat> things like police departments and fire departments, but it is the right call for health care. That's, that's, that's my question. First of all, I maybe. disagree with that point. I, I wish that police departments and fire departments were for profit, um, but, but that's a separate issue. I do believe that health care should be uh, free. Fire departments, to, not police. Uh, around here, we have volunteer fire departments, and they come house to house, and we all give them a, a, a large check every year, I, okay. you know, a, a couple hundred bucks. Then never mind, sorry. Um, make sure they come to your house on a, in a hurry, right? Um, I think that all Americans should have free health care. And I, I think that the way that we still have an impetus there for pharmaceutical companies, big pharma, to, to move forward with innovations and, uh, and, and for them to, to put capital out there at risk to, to do the research and development that spawns new innovation in pharmaceuticals, in medical sciences, in nanotechnology and everything else, we have to profit from the other countries, all right? This is America first uh, healthcare plan that I'm thinking of. Like, like we charge everybody else a premium but we, for, there for should what? be a. I'm, I'm confused what you're saying. I'm saying that all we should all get free health care. I I, th I think that it, it should be a, a basic human right, not a human right, a basic American right, and, and that's just my opinion. It just I, I I I've seen too many people who are who can't afford health care. Uh, I've seen too many people, and and maybe there should be the, some the, regulations. There should be some rules. One thing to say is like uh, the health care versus health insurance thing. It's like those often get confused. Like you can have insurance. And still not have access to health care. Like, for example, lots of people are on Medicare, and more and more and more doctors every day are saying, no, I don't get enough government reimbursement, so I'm not taking on Medicare customers. So you can say, hey, I'm covered. I got Medicare. But there's still no health care, even though you have the health insurance. And so I, I think the free market is the best solution for it because similar to pretty much everything else, the more, ver the more variety and the more competition you inject into something, the more you're going to have plans and packages that are competitive. And you want to get rid of things that don't allow companies to work across state lines, for example. So if you're stuck in Kentucky and it's like, well, God damn it, they have a plan in Arkansas that would be really good for me, but I can't purchase it because I live in Kentucky. I'm stuck with this shit one. Like, that doesn't help. The more free it is, and of course that doesn't mean – you know, do whatever the fuck you want. There's still government regulation that's needed. But for the most part, when you allow companies to make different plans, like for example, Obamacare forced pretty much every policy to cover things that someone like me or Kyle or Hutch or Woody wouldn't need to pay for. I don't need pediatric dental care. Um, I don't need birth control. I don't need a lot of these things that, but they say now you need all of these on your plans. And the reason for that is so that I can subsidize people who can't otherwise afford for their health insurance, which by the way, doesn't mean just because they have insurance doesn't mean they're getting proper care if good care at all. And so I just think it reflects on pretty much every other aspect of our society where it's like, hey, when you want something that's cheaper, higher quality, and you want to overall increase the supply, you want competition. You know, and I feel like the single payer thing especially is taking basically our current supply of healthcare and attempting to redistribute it while not incentivizing any expansion or improvements because there's no incentive to. You know, we have the best doctors on earth. Anyone who who lives across the world and they want surgery and they can afford it, they come here because we have the highest quality health care. Like you can have, I think it's Ben Shapiro, probably fucking Ben Shapiro says it. He says you can have universality, you can have affordability, uh, or you can have quality. And you only have two of those things. So you can have really shit health care that everybody has. Like, I mean, you can already see this happening in the UK, uh, Japan, Canada, where rationing is going on. Uh, just like that Charlie Gard story a couple months ago where the, the government said uh, in the UK, no, you can't take your son out of here and no, we're not going to continue treatment because the panel decided, no, you, we're no longer going to fund this because we don't see it. You know, let him, quote, die with dignity. How, that's pretty well, fucking Orwellian. I agree, well, with everything, I agree with everything you just said. What I'm aiming at and what I said is more about the eventuality, the, 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 what, what occurs. I, I, I think that every American should have as much health care, forget health insurance, just forget that, have as much health care as they need, right? Well, everybody and, wants that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that, and, and whatever it takes to get that, I'm for that. Dude, but, but I agree thing. with everything you just said. Like, that's the thing with, like, the both sides. I think too often we put impose motive on the other side when it's like, I genuinely, I truly believe sincerely that both sides want people to have health care. They want the highest quality thing. There are just wildly different uh, 
points of view on how to get there. One side thinks that you know you need to have the government in charge of it to, to distribute it correctly. And the other side thinks, no, let people make their own decisions. And these, these companies are going to compete to the point that, that drives the price down as it does, you know, unless that there are regulations across state lines. That happens with internet companies where you, you, you're forced into one, uh, one company because of regulations that the government says, oh, same thing with EpiPen. You know, where EpiPen was so expensive over here, not because of some, you know, it was corporate greed on behalf of EpiPen, sure. But the, what facilitated that was the fact that the government said, all right, those epinephrine pen manufacturers in the UK and Germany and Japan and whatever, they can no longer import here. And so then that facilitated that greed on behalf of that corporation, EpiPen, you know. So, 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 the, the, so the question I have is, is when you have a country like the United States where I think over half – of everybody that lives in the United States is living paycheck to paycheck. If I'm not mistaken, I'm just pulling this out of my ass. I'm pretty sure I read something recently that said that suggested that. Like lot, would it, okay. would it would it really surprise any of us in this in this Skype call if that were the case? But assuming that's the case, assuming that's the case that over half of people that live in the United States live paycheck to paycheck, what do you do when people can't afford care? What do you what do you do? Because you can't just walk into an oncology ward. And say, hey, give me chemo. That's not how it works. They're they're gonna bill you. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna ask for some form of insurance or cash payment or something. They're not gonna just hook you up to an IV or give you you know walk you out of the the hospital with a prescription for yeah. something. You, you <laughs> need money to get that done. So what are you is is are we actually suggesting that we let people die well, I mean, so that the, no, no, so no. that the free so that the free market can 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 spawn innovation. For, I mean, first of all, uh, I think it's it's not totally fair to say just let people die. It's not like people were dying in the streets before 2012. And also there's very little evidence that shows access to Medicare actually improves livelihood or life expectancy because you can have, like I said, great insurance from Medicaid, Medicare for all. And then you walk into that oncology department and the oncologist goes, I'm sorry, I don't accept Medicare. But I have insurance. Yeah, you do. And we don't accept it here because we don't get reimbursed to the extent that it makes it uh, viable for us. And so it's just another one of those things where it's like, yeah, in, in, in thought, you want everybody to have insurance. But practically, that insurance doesn't necessarily correlate to the care that you need. Well, well the, the Graham-Cassidy bill, that the one that they're, they're, they're trying to vote on in the next couple of weeks, they allow states to decide whether or not they're going to keep or maintain existing protections for uh, pre-existing conditions that came about mm. as a result of the Affordable Care Act. So I, 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 uh, I lost my train of thought, you guys. Uh, Was it about crossing uh, that, state that, lines? The, the Graham bill that's coming up in the next couple of weeks where the states can opt. Right. So, so – There's a couple I just, problems. I just have a, I just have a, I just have a problem. Like really, uh, what, for what you said about Medicare too, as as far as it, it's um, the evidence being lack, uh, the evidence being lacking that uh, it leads to a longer life. That's actually really disputed. I've read a bunch of articles on both sides, so I'm not sure that that's established fact. You, I'm sure you can find a lot of people okay, that yeah, I'm, that will I'm say that, that, Medic that, that that Medicare saved their life. Uh, I don't know. You guys, I just have a really difficult time wrapping my head around this idea of just letting people stay sick because they can't afford care. That doesn't, that to me seems like, that, that to me seems like yeah. it's, 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 it, the, the Republicans, I don't like that either. The Republicans but, wrap it in this package like we're giving you more freedom to decide. But for a lot of people, what they're giving them the freedom to do is not afford coverage. It doesn't matter if they have more freedom. If you only have, you know, five hundred dollars extra money each month out of your paycheck that's not going towards bills or your kids' school or clothes or food or other basic necessities, then what's the point of having more freedom? Like, uh, the, yeah. Anyways, I just I, I no. I, I, totally, I, I what always comes to my from. mind like, with that argument? Nobody wants people to die. Yeah, nobody wants people to die except like like what about the people who have done something to them? It's it's self-inflicted. What the the reason that they need like obesity or alcoholism? And that's or exactly like that. the one. O obesity and, and alcoholism. If if, if someone comes if someone comes in and they're inc yes, if they, someone comes in and they're incredibly overweight and uh, because of that they have some extremely expensive thing that needs to be fixed. Like like I just don't want to pay for that. I don't. Well, it's so a slippery premise, slope, is, though, right? Is because the, it's the premise that we're just everything self-inflicted to some extent, almost, right? I mean, you could definitely argue my broken leg was self-inflicted. One chicken leg at a time. You did that on a that, that happened like this. I One know. Day it happened. I'm and responsible how, for and, my decisions, though, right? I mean, it, 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 every surfer, every extreme sport guy, every paraglider, every hang glider, every 
I don't know, they, like pick your poison, right? The MMA training dude. You know, Here's he, the difference, though. Like when you eat that chicken leg, you know it's making you fatter. There's no fucking doubt you're getting fatter. But when you drive your car, or when you step outside of the safety of your home, or when you fly through the air, that the the expectations are safety. That 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 is what the if you thought that 100% like yeah, I'm, I'm gonna yeah. break my leg today because that's just what happens when you fly. That's a di- that's a different story. If you broke your leg doing jackass stunts, working for the film Jackass, well I don't know if we're gonna cover that, Bucko. Sorry, Johnny, you're gonna have to be yeah. putting those catheters in and paying for yourself. But every time you eat that chicken, like 100% guaranteed. Mm. You are absorbing those calories unless you develop a very healthy government sponsored <laughs> eating disorder. I hear you. All I'm throwing out is there's a slippery slope counter argument to be made on that. On the capitalism I, thing that Taylor was saying, I mean, my listeners have heard this before. I feel like capitalism solves 99.9% of problems. I, I like it for almost everything, but there's a few. We mentioned the fire department. I swear, like, if your house is worth 300000 and the fire department says, ah, we'll save it for two fifty, dollars then you're like, ah, yeah, I guess yeah, we got like, a deal. Yeah, home. Yeah. Yeah, but that's not a great plan. You know, it's way better to have a government run fire department, I think. Police department especially, right? There's an area where I don't think capitalism works very well. No, Otherwise, I disagree with style on that. It, okay. Otherwise they wouldn't serve the poor very well and it would be a very unequal justice system worse than now. And uh, you go to healthcare, and I, I feel the same way, you know, like you're dealing with people under such duress who will pay anything, who will mortgage their entire future until the day they die, right? You know, if they say, look, we can solve your kid's cancer, but it's a million dollars. And that to you is a lifetime of earnings. You'll probably be like, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm scheduled for this lifetime. That's what I'll be buying, you know. And, and, people, and, and, and some people treat it like it's this big mystery how you would fund something like that. It's pretty straightforward. You tax the rich. Some people don't like hearing that, but you tax the rich. And when you look at and when you look at and when you look at real wages over the last 30 years, and compare that to CEOs' wages, and you see how much wages have stagnated for the middle class, and how much that middle class is shrinking over the last several decades, I don't feel bad asking for the wealthiest one percent in this country to be taxed more to and subsidize this sort of thing. Uh, There's another thing I wanted these, to get out these, there. These, in, in Hutch, these, consumer, right? these, these consumers and these workers have made these CEOs and wealthy businessmen and bankers rich for centuries mm. now. So the, I, I don't think it's too much to too, ask that they... I, I am on the same page as that. I, I, and that's what Obamacare what? did to some extent. They taxed the rich and, and redistributed that money to health care for everybody else. The, the crossing state lines thing, and just so people know the counter-argument... Um, We've seen it with banks, right? If you look at all the banks, they're based in like Delaware or Charlotte is another big one. And it's because that those states have really favorable laws for the banks. If you want to base mm-hmm. your bank in like Missouri, I'm not even sure about that one. Then they may have laws that protect the consumer a lot more than Delaware. So I'm not founding my bank in Missouri. That would be ludicrous. That's the same thing with healthcare. And the problem with healthcare, a lot like financial instruments, is that it's so complicated. I don't know... I think I'm but a pretty I, smart guy, and I've read a lot of you know college level stuff in my lifetime. And mm-hmm. if you hand me my healthcare plan, I feel like I still might not get it. I might not understand what it is the difference between a Missouri plan and a North Carolina plan, and I could um, get fucked. And there are other people, this is so arrogant, who aren't as smart as me, who will definitely get fucked. So that's then, the, but, that's the state line counter argument, you know. Well, then you, then you I can, also. I, I mean, then, another argument to the state line thing is like. That doesn't mean that all banks are based out of Delaware. Like Missouri is a market and there are lots of banks here, just using Missouri as the example. Like there's still where there is business, businessmen will find ways to make money and provide a service as long as there's someone there to buy it. And that's just my point is that if there's incentive of these companies to compete with one another, they'll go, hey, these people with pre-existing conditions, that's a market we want to get. We'll make a high-risk pool for those people, and we'll have plans specific for them. Oh, what about young white guys or young uh, you know, women or whatever? And they don't, theirs isn't as expensive, and so we'll make a custom-tailored plan for them that's cheaper and better. Like It's just a matter of forcing these companies to provide... Not, and I mean, you can tell that the insurance companies aren't, they don't like it. They pull out all the time out of states. And that's a part of the reason they were able to provide these in the first place to some people is because of the billions of dollars they got in, uh, in bailouts from Obama, because basically they were paying for them to be able to provide those plans that were otherwise economically not feasible. Because it, it Incentive, and that's the thing with pre, outs, but yeah. Inse- sorry. And the, uh, the thing with pre existing conditions, like it's, it doesn't, it's not nice. 
but it is a fact of life that a pre-existing condition, like if I'm buying home insurance, if my, if my house burns down, I can't then go buy home insurance because then I'm just purchasing the reconstruction of a home for the price of an insurance claim. And lots of people are just going to go, why the fuck? Well, and I, it's not, not are going to. Lots of people do say, why the fuck would I pay for any premium whatsoever when I can walk in, get a, a, a policy that covers my pre-existing condition and just have someone else foot the bill for it? And, and that definitely is a problem with this. Well, you know well what I, the, understand, I understand the free market explanation for why – covering something like a pre-existing condition should cost more. But I'm saying that that totally divorces us from the, the, the humane aspect of this conversation. Is it right to let someone wither away because they can't afford a lot of these people, a lot of these people, if they don't have the kind of protections that they're getting now, they're not going to go to the doctor. They're not going to go to the doctor for years because they're afraid of what the doctor is going to tell them. So they're just going to get even sicker, even faster because they're so terrified of becoming te destitute because there's, they there's have some kind of pre-existing condition. There's two I just bad don't... behaviors that insurance companies did um, mm -hmm. that's going to become possible if Graham Cassidy passed, passes. One of them is, is the pre-existing condition thing. And, and what would happen is like you'd get cancer, right? Now I've got leukemia. The insurance companies would scramble to find a way that I had some indicator of leukemia. You know, I'll make it up like, oh. He had that mole looked at two years earlier. He's had leukemia this whole time. We're calling that a pre-existing condition and we're not covering it. And you're like, fuck, you know, like, and that happened. That happened all the time. Bacne was a, was a classic one. People would have back acne and they would be like, that's a cancer indicator. This is a pre-existing condition. You're fucked. And, and that's dirty. The other thing is you'd sit there and you'd pay your premiums reliably for 15 years. And that would be a thing. And then you'd get sick and they'd be like, ooh, he's a sickie. Let's quintuple his price because we know that you know what he has is going to make him expensive this year and under obamacare that became illegal you could only raise somebody's plan x percent or, or whatever but under graham cassidy it will become legal again they can they yeah. can just charge you premiums forever and then if you get sick then they can either price you out to where you can't afford health insurance or price you up to where you don't like what's the purpose of it yeah, or lifetime caps too. If you reach like a million dollar threshold, then they're not going to cover you for the rest of that for the rest of your costs. I guess it just I mean, it, we're we're facing down this question. They're and getting... say what you, say what you will about Obama, say what you will about Bernie, but they've both done a really good job of thrusting this issue into the mainstream. Uh, you know, people like Michael Moore tried to do it as well. Hillary Clinton what, tried to do it for a lot of years too. What but, I don't... but the, the the question that we need to ask ourselves is are we going to let sick people get sicker? Or are we going to let sick people I, die? I and think. I, that, well, I think a good, another good question to ask is how do we provide the best possible health care to as many people as possible? Like, and I think that that. I'd rather that have question, long lines I think than no coverage. Question, I would. I I, me personally, I would rather have both sides are trying to answer. I would I rather, I think have, so. I would rather have long lines than 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 no coverage. And that's here's just a woody me. conspiracy thing, right? I, I feel like the Graham Cassidy bill specifically. A lot of what it does is just give insurance companies the tools to fuck people, right? That's what it is. Oh, does a guy get sick? You can raise his premium as much as you want. Oh, pre-existing conditions. Let's bring that back around. If you can find a way to slither out of covering him, then you know that's, that, that tool is back in your toolbox. A lot of what's happening with this stuff is they're just arming insurance companies with the but, tools not I mean, to cover you're, people. You're kind of making it seem like before 2012, it was just this travesty of people <sighs> dying in the streets and nobody had insurance or health care. The overwhelming majority of people with health care don't get it through the – you know, the individual market, they get it through their employer. Right, yeah. Well, 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 not everybody had employers back then that would have provided that sort of thing. And there's pro and there's problems and That's an anti-capitalism yeah, argument, true. too. I hate, I hate the idea. Like, I, I might still be working at Cisco if I had to get my health insurance through my company, right? You're anti-entrepreneur in my mind if you're saying, hey, you know what? You get it through your paternalistic Fortune 500 company. Now you're stuck there being and, a wage and slave in your queue. You don't have to, though. <laughs> well, well so, sometimes you don't really have a choice. If you got a family to feed, you do what you got to do to get by. I mean, so, that's true. Like, but that's also just kind of having a job, like you know, yeah. in that way, like getting it. But you're stuck. Like I, I think individuals should be able to get the same kind of deals, roughly, that companies get. Oh yeah, or, because the individuals can't collectively uh, bargain. You know, like whereas that Cisco could. Yeah. No. So if you put some structure in place that says, all right, the rule is you can't fuck individuals that hard, then. No. 
that's regulation that maybe I could be get behind. Yeah. Oh, there's definitely like a middle ground here. I'm not saying that, oh, fuck all regulation and just know <laughs> that the corporations are going to take care of us. Like, of course not. That's ridiculous. Like, mm-hmm. re- regulation is needed by the government in lots of aspects of life. It's just Whoa. a matter of, I... <laughs> <laughs> I talked Whoa. earlier about how, hey, North Korea, like... Sometimes there's no right answer to me. It's not obvious. You know, wh- whatever goes down there, even if it's war, I might be like, his arm was twisted. You know, D- if Hillary won, the same thing could have happened. I'm not sure. But with this, I feel like there's a right and wrong answer here, right? You know, it's like, hey, let's put a bill forward that lowers taxes on the rich and gives insurance companies the tool to screw people. I'm like, how is how- this isn't a two sided issue to me? There are lots I, of issues I, that are. This isn't. I think you're, I think you're kind of downplaying people that didn't have coverage before Taylor because there, there were absolutely people that withered withered on the vine and just were and the system totally failed them and that and, and there no, were people like through, that in the through, UK and Canada and Japan all over the place or that were trapped in their jobs right there are people who who may have had people, people the means in Canada to retire and Japan they had... get better health care coverage than we do that's just that's just an established fact like you draw this distinction between quality and availability but at the same at, at, by the same token just because you had to wait three weeks to see a doctor or two weeks to see a doctor or something like that, you still saw a doctor. I'd rather, one or two I'd rather weeks see is it. not as long. It's it's often months and months and months. And if then about panels major, not, and, If you're talking about major like, surgeries, but but this I but this idea that surgeries. if you if it, just go on Twitter and ask people in Canada, well, I don't know. Your followers might be a different, <laughs> a, a, a different political <laughs> leaning. Careful on yeah. Twitter, but yeah. Something, yeah, you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be careful every time you're, you're like ask your followers this or that. But no, I, I, I like think you can. I, I think, I think, I think if you looked at the population satisfaction with healthcare coverage in places like France and England and Canada and Japan, I'm, 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 I'm sure that a majority of them will say yes. We like this system. We want to keep it in place. But you can already see the problems that crop up from these sort of systems where they're, they're more and more rationing care. I think we'll have a cumulative effect if everyone from birth has health care. If you, everyone from birth has health care and man, you, you want to talk about the times when we let people wither away and die? If you don't show up for your mandatory checkups, which are scheduled every, I don't know when, but a doctor would decide, the Surgeon General perhaps, if you don't show up for your mandatory checkups, you're not covered. You didn't show the fuck up. But if from birth, every six to eight months, you went and saw a medical professional and he caught your cancer at the very beginning, he caught your diabetes just at, you ca- he caught your early onset diabetes at a point where it can be curbed away. And so now you're no longer the guy who needs insulin daily. You're the guy whose diet was fixed. Yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. then, then you have a cumulative effect. It would be a big loser initially, but eventually you'll have a cumulative effect where Save we have sh- the... Not only do we, not, let, we let me, let me, <laughs> I know, let me keep going here. Let me, let, let's, please let me finish. Not <laughs> only would you have a, a healthier population, but you would, ha- but through that, you would have a higher GDP. Your population would be more productive through that health. You, you would have fewer sick people and there would be more money to feed right back yeah. into that loop. And I, I also don't like the, 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 the premise that like this, the assumption that I see from a lot of people's perspective, from a lot of a lot of people that talk to me through social media, that's where I talk to most people. It, uh, the perspective is people that rely on social safety nets are inherently lazy. That, that is the assumption. I don't think that's that they, true. That they, well, that's what I see a lot. I don't know if that's the, the general vibe out there, but that's what I see a lot. There are a lot of people that have the assumption that if someone needs something like food stamps or welfare or subsidized health care or housing or something like that, it's because they fucked up. And I just don't I, I don't see how that's productive to, to, to think that way or to assume that about people. You're totally ignoring things like injury, natural disaster, uh, disease. Uh, all these things can totally upend someone's life uh, uh, financially and otherwise well, to yeah, the point yeah. where just they're not like able to take care of themselves. Just being idiot is only one way you might end up like that. But you're right. There's so much – like m- can, most of those people I don't think are are just so lazy they can't – they decide not to do stuff. Like, I don't, maybe, maybe people do think that, but I, I was going like, to say, I, you know, Kyle's plan of mandatory. Uh, I'm not too far. I'm, I mostly like it, but I do think maybe in, <laughs> like I, I'm picturing men with like riot gear, taking you to the doctor. If we could swap that with just a fine, you know, maybe also, we, six <laughs> to, every six to eight months, dude, like how busy is every doctor's office on the planet going to be for the people who actually need no, to no, get no. in. No, no, you don't like... go to a doctor's office. The doctor comes to your workplace. Skype. Oh my no, God, no, so the, doctor, 
The yeah. doctors. You remember that episode of Seinfeld? Remember when Mr. Kruger needed that mole checked out? Well, Dr. Uh, Van Nostren just showed the fuck up. He well, came in there, checked out that mole, gave him the A-OK, and it was all good. Long, longer, long, longer wait times and more crowded hospitals and clinics are going to be a fact of life anytime you say, hey, we'll also cover you guys. All you, you know, 30 million people will cover you as well. That just needs to be a, an acceptable premise if we're going to operate under the assumption that everybody in this country should be taken care of. Not, not we should give you money so you can just sit on your couch and do nothing all day, but just make sure that you have the most essential health care benefits that every person needs. You, you know, spend everybody $700 billion a year on defense, okay? I don't know what we spend on health care, but let's make that $700 billion work what? for us, right? Where'd you, get, where'd you get that number? I don't know. So Trump, like his thing is, I'm going politics. I can't stop. Uh, hey, we should back out of we should back out of the Iran deal. And on the other hand, we should also try to set up a deal with North Korea. I'm sure they'll trust us. No, no. but Woody, the North Korea deals have gone so well so far. You just keep keep pushing through. I, keep letting them go. I, yeah, there, yeah, there's no way. There's no good way to handle that situation. You're like, right. There's just no oh good way gosh. to handle. It. I don't have. Sometimes I feel like. Hey, what they're doing on this thing is clearly wrong. Why are they doing that? The, the only logical answer I can come up with is big snacks is, is funding them or something, right? But, but on the North Korea issue, like, I don't, there are no simple what? answers. We mentioned big <laughs> snacks and Nature snacks. Box. Not, not big snacks, the, not the YouTuber. About the snack you know, lobby. big yeah. oil. We're talking about big, the oh, snack okay, lobby okay. is a callback. I, was, I, thought, I, thought you meant, I thought you meant the guy, big sma snacks, who owned Yaosh back in the day. You remember uh, that guy? I do remember yeah. him. It was not a reference th to him. It was, uh, okay. it was right. the Nature Box lobby <laughs> like, that gets things down to $2. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, North Korea, super complicated. I, there's no obvious answers there, so I tried to throw stones. You know, um, you know, I, I have this theory because, like, one of the things that's been getting me pretty pissed off uh, from from Twitter in the last couple of days is the amount of comments that I'm seeing from. I'm guessing a lot of them are young, but these people that think that that think that the obvious solution is to just go in and preemptively strike. North Korea, and I and I was thinking about that today. I'm like, okay, why are, like, why would people be suggesting something so drastic? And I think the reason is because a lot of a lot of people, you know, that when they were young, we were at war with Iraq, which is not a tiny country. In fact, I think it's like almost the same size as far as population goes as North Korea. At the time, but, Iraq had the third largest military on earth. But they were geopolitically very isolated, and they didn't have any allies that were worth uh, that were that were willing to go to. To, to, to fight for them, and they were no match for American militaristic mm. might. That is not the case in North Korea. They have allies, they have their own arsenal, and they have the capacity to do um, uh, um, unthinkable levels of destruction in yeah. Japan, in, in Seoul. Guam, in yeah. South Korea, in the, on the west coast of the United States, maybe. Particularly Seoul, right? Because like, yeah. like Ch Chiz and I were go talking about this extensively yesterday, and I was looking into the, the hardened artillery placements that they have, and they have thousands of them, and for those who don't know what an artillery piece is, it's, a, it's basically a giant cannon that shoots an explosive shell. You cannot counter it with any of the fancy missile uh, defense stuff, any of the David's, uh, what is it? What do they, they call it in Israel? David's... Uh, David's sling or something? Something like that. Whatever the dome or whatever they've there's got. A you, thad, and there's a Thad yeah. missile defense. In, yeah. yeah, that doesn't work either. These things are high velocity, low altitude projectiles, and they have so many of them. And they're not just sitting out when, when we use artillery because we have air support and we own the skies, we just sit them out in a field next to each other, right? You've seen the big guns firing in, in you know, unison. They put theirs underground with just a hole for the barrel to shoot through. So they're difficult to, to knock one out. I'm sure if we yeah. knew where one was, we had the munitions to do it. But there's thousands of them. And the issue isn't if we can get them, it's how long it takes. Because the rate of fire on these things is really fast. It's a, a shell every few seconds. And I, I, I did the math and like it's it was like 30 metric tons of explosives every time they pull the trigger with all of them and all that's landing in Seoul every time they shoot. And that doesn't include the 300 millimeter rocket launchers they have that fire 12 yeah. rockets simultaneously. It's uh, it's a 
it, that's the issue. Steve no, Bannon no, no. laid it out pretty well. He was like, you know, the, the thing is they've got all these guns pointed at Seoul. I know you're probably not a huge fan, neither am I, but he's not no, dumb. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, that's not why I'm laughing. Oh, so, so he, uh, he's like, they've got all these things pointed at Seoul, and we cannot stop them from taking out Seoul as quickly as we, if we, even if we launched first and snuck up on them, and like, they would still get all no. their shots off, and mm -hmm. Seoul would be doomed. And Seoul has 8 million people, which is a lot. <laughs> yeah. Not a small like number, yeah. And the, the, the reason I chuckled a little bit is because There's McMaster and anyway, uh, I think it's I think it's nine. I think it's nine, eight to eight or nine million, something like that. But okay. uh, HR McMaster and Mattis were not happy with Bannon saying that because I don't know why they were like. What do they think? Like, do they, do they think that that they can convince us that there's some other military option that they haven't discussed yet? Because there's, as far as I know, unless you literally nuked all of North Korea. And just wiped it off the face of the planet. You're not going to be able to stop traditional art artillery from completely destroying Seoul and many other parts of. I've heard nukes North are Korea. as good and as you missile, think. It, and, and, but the other thing I wanted to say real quick before you get to that is like our missile de defense systems are you know obviously stronger than they were like in the 80s or something like that. But what happens if a country decides to launch a salvo of nuclear warheads at us? We don't. Our 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 missile defense system can't handle hundreds and hundreds of missiles it's not going to be able to knock every single one of them out of the sky would north and even be able to send a salvo though because like no they'd only be able to send no when we're, t when we're talking we about multiples know. you're talking i'm just we talking do. about theoretical no, well, they, no, no, they don't have enough about... uranium to to do that they, they're not gonna have a set it, it's russia and china like like the, the the guys who have hundreds in china's case and thousands in russia's case of like oh, they, they, Russia, they, they, yeah. they, est they estimate that north korea has between 20 and 60 nuclear warheads so they don't they don't have the compa i'm not talking about just north korea attacking the united states i'm talking about any nation attacking any nation so this mm -hmm. idea that we have these foolproof uh, nuclear deterrence is just well, well, misplaced. The, the biggest nuclear deterrent is mutually assured annihilation, right? The fact yeah. that we have like 2,000 ICBMs of our own that are that are pretty effective themselves, and nobody has as good of missile defense as we do. So, like, we're you, know, you go back to uh, what's uh, uh, what's the uh, the movie when they're when they're working it anyway. We'd so. More of us would survive the, the nuclear holocaust than them, sir. It, it'd all be okay, you know. Well, yeah, it's not Red like, Dawn, it's, it's not is question. it? Is that no, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's a Stanley Cooper movie. It's uh, uh, Dr. Strangelove. It's Dr. Strangelove. The, the generals explain to the president, he, he, he's like, we would be, we would definitely be able to go underground, and a few hundred years will come up from underground, but... but the problem is, what if, what if the Reds hang on to a few nukes, sir? What if they hang on to a few and they nuke us in the future? And he's, he's like, we need complete destruction. We have to annihilate, annihilate, annihilate. Oh, it's such a good movie. But yeah, I, I'm not worried about like full-on nuclear war because I don't think Russia or China or India, Pakistan... I think Russia or and China know that even though it'd be mutually assured devastation, destruction, whatever, like they're not going to win that fight in the end. Nobody's going to win, but the quote-unquote... Uh, I guess Pyrrhic win victor will be the United States, and so I don't think they would. But North Korea does make you nervous with it. Yeah, she just said Australia will win. Maybe. Yeah, everybody forgets. And they're like, ah, this turned out pretty well. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, to get, but, but to get in front of a camera and a microphone and 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 go to dictator like Kim Jong Un by calling him Rocket Man, what is the upside to that? I I can, you, you know what he's doing? He wins elections. Is, the, is, there, is there an upside to that at all? That's his style, right? He labels people. He slaps a label on them, you know, Lion Ted, uh, Little Marco, oh, yeah. Crooked Hillary. And, and that's all that is, you know? It, it's just him going right back to uh, I have my election. own theory. Too many nicknames. I, yeah. I, I, maybe <laughs> this is just that. me. I wonder if he has trouble pronouncing Kim Jong-un. Ah, uh, I would like. I, I'm maybe, like, oh, guys, maybe, I get it right about a third of the time. Can we just nickname this fucker? <laughs> what, what if he was just listening to a lot of Elton John? I mean, think about the lyrics of that song, "Rocket Man, burning up his fuse up there alone." Maybe he, maybe that's the case. Maybe that's Did you know that, that album theory. is up like 400 or 500 percent on Amazon? <laughs> I've been listening to it on a on a loop on YouTube. I is love that, that shit. Fuck! I wish he called him Woody's or, gamer yeah, tag. Right now. <laughs> yeah, the song is up a lot. So Elton John doesn't mind. No, not a bit. He's all no. for nuclear war. 
No, yeah, you're absolutely right. We we've talked about it before. It's it's a it's a real fucking uh, issue with North Korea and preemptive strike. I don't think is the the way to go. If, if I were running the military and you told me that we have to do something now or they're launching next week, uh, my thing would be all right. Well, we've got to get the like whatever coordinates the artillery pieces, whatever command and control there is to t- say all right, everyone shoot. We have to hit that and Kim himself simultaneously at the same time and not with airplanes like. There have to be people on the ground, like parachuting in special forces or something. Ninjas. Like you've got to. That's what Mattis, <laughs> That's what that's what Mattis has, I think, recently talked about was that 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 the, the need for troops on the ground. It wouldn't just be a war of shooting rockets at your enemy. You'd have to actually literally go in and invade the yeah. country and install yeah. and, some new. Some yeah, I don't think we should invade or, North Korea. We joke about ninjas, right. Right but now. Japan is right there, and they're certainly in the fight. Japan sends their ninjas. We send send our SEAL teams. <laughs> I don't think they have too many. Up in a week. Yeah, and, Kyle, oh, you're so ninjas. racist. They have samurais. They've, they've got ninjas too. <laughs> I think I they know. have ninjas in Japan as well. If yeah, 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 they, I don't really know. Sure. I just yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> 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 Everybody special forces. The Mounties. Mounties. <laughs> Yeah, they come riding riding elks, wings, riding boots. <laughs> yeah, when those when those five foot one starved North Korean soldiers see a big burly Canadian man with a beard down to here mm. riding a moose into their land, they'll they'll quit right then and, and there. And he'll do it like the they do hockey fights where the Canadian will be like, you know, I'm not a big fan of physical violence, but I'm here for it, and so we gotta go. Throw him <laughs> down, man. We're throwing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> we're not even. Let me the get intimid- up the, for a the, in- yeah. the intimidation factor is key here, gentlemen. I'm with you on that. <laughs> so, so, just out of curiosity, oh, you got your story. Awesome coming at you. Yeah, with everything Canada's got. The Great White North. You know, like <laughs> there are the snowballs, Canada, and I love Canadians. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm curious. Are are I know where you stand, Woody? But Kyle and 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 uh, Taylor, are you are you guys ha- happy with Trump's performance no. in, in the no. house right okay. now? Yeah. Let me jump on this no. first because I think about this a lot. Um, I'm not happy at all. However, I felt like just based on what Hillary said pre during the election, she seemed very hawkish on these matters. And, and while Trump has talked a lot of stupid, irresponsible shit, he hasn't shot anyone yet. You know what I mean? He hasn't done anything yet. And some of the proposals that Hillary had, particularly in Syria, seemed like they were going to really, particularly in Syria, seemed like they were going to put us in a, in a real snafu with Russia. And we just talked a minute ago about what an issue that could be. So, so like, no, I'm not happy at all from top to bottom. I can sift through like a like I'm panning for gold and find a speck here and there. I'm like, all right, I guess you weren't complete imbecile here. We'll we'll hang yeah, on to that see, little that's, bit. That's what it is. So many people are like, like sifting through all the stuff they don't like and still in denial about it. Where it's like, because he's not, he's not conservative at all. He's not imposing any conservative principles or ideas because, because he's not a conservative himself. But people will sift through and be like, ah, oh, but Gorsuch. And it's like, well, yeah, I like that too. I think that's good. But are you going to hang your hat on that for the next four, four years? years? Like yeah. he really hasn't done much That was one of the specs of gold. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's like what that's, I was like, thinking. And so, no. Yeah. I, I, one thing, like Kyle did it to some extent, but I, people are like, all right, I'm, I'm not in love with how Trump's doing so far. We hope it turns around. But the alternative universe would have been nuclear war, fallout, et cetera, et cetera, right? Hillary was just about to launch, and, and it's like, I don't know. You know, like it, 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 and now Trump's looking hawkish. Yeah. The truth is, as much as well, I've very, always not uh, like President, hawkish. W is the only one that I thought was really, really bad. You know, like I didn't vote for Clinton, uh, the, the first one, but it turned out pretty well. I didn't vote for his, I think I was too young to vote for his dad. But that turned out okay-ish, and, and Obama turned out pretty well. The economy turned around, and we didn't have any major wars. And now Trump is in there, and as much as I'm not happy with how things are trending, he didn't, nothing's he didn't messed up yet. Any, he, the, Obama uh, didn't start any new major wars, although he droned <laughs> the fuck out of the world. You know, just, just you remember who we'd always hear about another wedding party getting blown up in Pakistan and like or that hospital. And, both. And, you know what? They say he had no accomplishments, but you're not counting the drone battles against the you know wedding of 2014. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so the, the drone wedding battle. <laughs> so the way I, the way I think about that is imagine sitting in a room with all your joint chiefs of staff. You're surrounded by generals, people that have been uh, uh, fighting on the geo, you know, geo the the. the geopolitical stage for decades now and you have all these men telling you that you can either send in 3,000 troops to this country or something like that or you can fire a drone off I imagine that that choice is very difficult I'm not 
I don't want to be an apologist for everything that Obama's done because I'm not, but uh, but I imagine that is a difficult decision. That being said, there have been more civilian casualties this year as a result of our bombing campaigns than in any other year in like the last 10 no, years or something I, like that. No, I, I read recently, not, yeah, I did yeah. read recently that Trump has surpassed Obama's eight years of civilian casualties. Like he's, <laughs> yeah, in, in whatever it is, seven or eight months. He's already I, I never know it. how they how they get those counts, you know, like, especially like, with civilians, right? Yeah. Because never, consider this, be, consider, yeah, it's never going to be 100 percent accurate. But. If we're firing a missile into a place that's so goddamn dangerous that we wouldn't dare send a, a, a Navy SEAL. How who goes down and like goes through this person's ID and like, oh, shit, that was yep. Bob. Bob was and, a baker. And they also like to add on like it's the same way with like Hamas, where like when Hamas gets bombed. And, you know, if all the dead people there like, oh, no, that guy with the AK-47 that we're quickly taking off of his shoulder. He was he, he worked at the bank like, <laughs> no, that like it, it, there is a lot of the numbers off foolery. pretty significantly. We are comparing still eight years good. to eight yeah. months. And, and that's so what you're telling me is he's well, eight times more effective. Sixteen times. Well, only been in there six am I right? Oh, why, six, why would that months? why would that be surprising, though, considering that his policy so far as far as like foreign policy and foreign conflicts goes, was to just let the generals off their leash. Like he told them, like go nuts. That was that was his like official policy. He said he had a secret plan to destroy ISIS, and then he comes into power and says that his secret plan was to give the generals 90 days to come up with a plan. And then he told them, you guys, you know, I'm letting you guys do your thing, do whatever you think is necessary. Which is also pretty clever because it allow it allows him to look tough, but then it also allows him to shift the blame if sh if shit goes south. As he can say, well, you know, that was their call, not mine. Yeah, I do. I do like him giving more control to the experts and the generals, though, in regard to some things where it's like, who do you want making that decision? Like, Civilians. yeah, I, I, I like Mad Dog Mathis. Like, and it <sighs> seems like every single person in the military likes that guy and they trust him and they and he knows what he's doing. And so I, yeah, disagree, like, I think it is actually. good to let them um, have I, I, so, uh, have more control over that situation as opposed to the president. So you know, who, I, I, I think they should that, take advice, but. If if you allow the military to make you know these high level military decisions, they always decide more war, right? It, it, the end of Iraq War, the end of World War Two, the end of every war I can think of, yeah, Cuban, or the beginning. The Cuban, they always the decide crisis, we I should think, fight. The Cuban Missile Crisis, I think, is a perfect example of that because JFK was surrounded by all of his generals telling him, "You need to fucking, you need a new Cuba, and you need to do it now." And he he held off for what, like thirteen days. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah that, that, all they have is a hammer. Do, Everything uh, is a nail. Least, then, yeah. That that's like, the, if, if, that's why the mil that's why we have civilian control of the military. That the, the commander in chief is a civilian, and it's because they have they, they make decisions on both directions. Sometimes I I, I think I, if I the think military the, the re it, that's what you get. The real, but we're talking about like big major decisions, like where to, whether we invade or not, and that's still with the civilian you know leadership mm -hmm. in Trump. But but I, I think it. The, the real important thing is the rules of engagement. The, the you know, you, I, I heard so many when I was talking to Dakota Meyer, he was like when he was doing that whole thing and saving all those people, then he won the Medal of Honor. One of the main issues they were having is that there was a school uh, full of bad guys and they were receiving tons of machine gun fire from it. And there were mortars hidden behind it. And they called in multiple times to have the school blown up and they wouldn't blow the school up. And and that was one of the things that, that cost so many lives that day. I think that. The, one of the things that Trump's done is kind of change the rules of engagement or rather let the generals uh, off the leash as to the rules of engagement. Isn't that kind then, of a contradiction, though, because like, how are you going to say that Hillary was going to be more of a hawk and then applaud Trump's decision to turn over control of our you know, involvement in foreign conflicts to hawks, to like a team of okay. hawks? Well, it's, we've been, it's, you've got Afghanistan, the longest conflict in American history. Like, It'd be great if we... Got, we got that thing over with, but it's wow. never going to be over yeah. with because the reason we're in Afghanistan has nothing to do with the Taliban or Afghanis. It's about dealing with Pakistan, who's across the border supporting actual terror. That's why we have to stay there. That's why Trump wasn't allowed to pull out the way he thought he was. They told him, like, ah, the, the real issue here, sir, is Pakistan and the way they support terrorism. But, yeah. but when, I, when I talk Who about Who knew it could Hillary, be so complicated? When I, Nobody oh, God, knew. Right? When I talk about <laughs> Hillary being hawkish, I mean, like, I mean getting in trouble with Russia, specifically her, her uh, call for a no-fly zone over all of Syria or parts of Syria. I, I, that, was just, that was literally going to, as soon as it was, it was in, uh, put into place, it was going to cause a conflict with Russia because Russia's flying their jets yeah. over. Are we going to shoot a Russian God. jet down? Yeah. That's risky. I mean, okay. I, I, at this point, I'd have to ask you how much you care about Russian involvement in our election. If you're, if you're so concerned about a conflict with Russia, 
are you concerned about what happened in the 2016 election? I'd like to know what happened uh, because mm -hmm. I've heard about the Facebook ad buy, something like a like a was it a hundred thousand dollars worth? Is that the yeah. right figure? That seems yeah. small. It has to be more than that. That's nothing. Because, it wasn't, it wasn't just on Facebook, too. It was on Twitter and Instagram Hillary, as well, I believe. Because Hillary spent a billion dollars, right? Like a billion dollars on her campaign. and we're uh, Just digitally? No. Her we, entire or, campaign. Okay, because that would be fucking well, bananas. That, that's what presidential campaigns cost, unless you're Donald Trump, and you come in under budget and ahead of schedule. <laughs> well, well, uh, we, uh, well, what, what, <laughs> well what, what you have... Okay, so like what you, what you have right now is you have all of the current and former heads of the CIA, NSA... FBI and what's the other one? NSA. Is there another one? NSA? Did I already say that? I think you did. You have all the current and former heads saying, like, telling us exactly what happened. So it, it's it's really on you if you believe them or not. To me, <laughs> I think I think it's I think it's much more implausible that all these heads of all these intelligence agencies and al along with them all these federal employees and agents that are working for these agencies. I think it is insane to think that. They're all engaging in some kind of conspiracy. Yeah, I mean, we don't. That, none that, of us believe that. I mean, that's I mean, what, that, what, what evidence that would, do you that, find that would most? That would be the biggest conspiracy in American pol political history if that were the case. That's what, that's what, uh, how. What evidence do you find the most compelling that Russia manipulated the? Or I guess like we have to get the phrasing down first. Like when you you mean they hacked the election and changed votes, or you think that they uh, poured there, money well, in somewhere? And like what what convinces you the most of that? Just. Curious. Well, when you look at when you look at Putin's agenda and what he what he wanted out of it, when you look at his interest in fracturing political alliances all around the world, mm -hmm. notably with NATO and the UN, uh, uh, and to undermine our democratic institutions in general, it, it 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 benefits him to create weaknesses in our political system. He gets sure. to point he gets to point at us and say, "See, democracy is a failed experiment. It's not gonna it's not gonna last." Uh, and then you also have the issue of sanctions with the Mag Magnitsky Act. Uh, you had, they called it the adoption issue. It's not an adoption issue, it's a sanctions issue. Uh, so he had a, a, a really uh, substantial financial interest in um, helping to install a leader in the United States that would be more friendly to Russia. As far as like specific evidence goes, you saw it anytime you logged into Facebook or Twitter. For, nah, like, that's not specific evidence. Okay, how about them to, meeting? I don't, I don't know what to how about them meeting with like I, like agents said, from the Russian government and you know Donald Trump saying I love it, and they go there and and, and then they didn't put it on their disclosure forms when they uh, applied for top I, secret clearance. Like just ten seconds. I have a question about. It, it's crazy to me that all of them forgot that meeting, right? Like uh, yeah, you know, like it, even in times where I had the lots of Eric meetings, in, uh -huh. even in times oh, where I had yeah. meetings that consume my life, there's no way. That I would forget meeting with like a Russian agent, a Russian hacker, a translator, and someone else, and they, they didn't all forget it. They did failed to disclose about it. That. it. Were those meetings? Did I don't I don't know specifically, but was that were were those meetings where they were gathering the intelligence uh, or, or learning what what had been found by exposing uh, you know the the DNC's emails? Th that's Is that the what theory. We're that's there? the theory. Yeah. So, so, so it, right, because let me found upon that. Let me let me just go one more step further. Like. The thing that that always kind of irks me a little about that is like, yeah, I don't want Russia fucking around our election. Those fucking commies, right? They have been our enemy since one day after World War II. <laughs> okay, yeah. one day later, and Stalin was our fucking enemy. Communism's killed a hundred million people in a hundred years, right? We always we all saw the Reddit post. It's true. But here's the thing: nobody ever stops and says. Yeah, but they were exposing a ton of corruption that fucked Bernie Sanders out of this thing. Hillary should have never been in there to begin with. Bernie won. The D the DNC f was fucking Bernie over, and the Russians exposed it to Bernie benefit themselves. Bernie didn't win. I don't, he did didn't. I, don't... I know he didn't because of the DNC. No oh, man, he didn't like, get a the, fair the, shake. The, 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 but... the DNC, the DNC hacks. Most of those emails were sent in like May after after Hillary had had already locked the nomination. I supported what Bernie did. I thought that was he. You know, I think he did what he did, staying staying in the race until the very fucking end. I think that was important. You know, from a from a progressive point of view, because he put he forced this new message out there into the mainstream, and now you're seeing mainstream left move from the center more towards the left, which I know bothers. Uh, Probably Kyle all of Taylor, us. But for, but, for, <laughs> but, for, but for but for but for people you know like me, I think that was important that he did that. That being said, he wasn't going to win that. 
And I don't, like I didn't see I don't I didn't see enough compelling evidence to suggest that the the DNC literally rigged the election in favor of him. Was there obvious bias? Yeah. But oh, yeah. where that where that bias showed showed its ugly face was like I said a moment ago, well into the point where Hillary had already locked the nomination. I supported Bernie like enthusiastically. I didn't have a lot of nice things to say about Hillary during the primaries. He was my candidate. I was really excited to see him get so much you know, him and mm-hmm. Donald Trump, you know, I thought that that was really fascinating point in American history that someone like Bernie Sanders and someone like Donald Trump could be elevated to that level of popularity. You know, I think there's a lot of good from that that you can draw and a lot of bad. Were, uh, that that were you, you pretty well. disappointed when Bernie got knocked out or did you quickly kind of just be like, all right, well, Hillary's the lesser of two evils here. Dude, yeah, like, I'm I, going I, with I, that. Or did no, you I, at all ever feel like they fucking cheated him? Like they, they got under, or they oh, did something. They were leaking questions to Hillary and giving her special treatment and biasing, you know, throwing him in the corner or, or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, I thought that was reprehensible. Donna Brazil giving the question out like that. Like, what are you dumb? Like, you don't, yeah. you don't, like, you don't need to do that. He didn't. She didn't need to do. It. Like, yeah, there no. were there were there were lots of evidence of foul play. Uh, uh, I am not making excuses for the DNC or suggesting that they acted ethically during mm-hmm. that primary, but I am pushing back by saying that they prevented Bernie from getting the nomination. I just don't think that that's true. And to answer your question, yeah, I did. You know, I was, I remember saying like, I'm going to abstain. If Hillary, if Hillary gets the nomination, I'm going to abstain. I'm not going to vote for anybody. And it took me about a week or two weeks before (laughs) I was like, this is serious. You know, like this is a, like, I, I, I did not think that like, I knew that he had a chance the whole time. You know, like I said, certain things to make myself feel better from I time didn't. to time, but on the on the morning of the election, I was scared shitless because Not I me. realized because I re- you thought you thought she had it totally locked. I was I was oh, wrong, I was but totally I thought right. I was so in if, the bag. <laughs> Dude, well, states were going for Trump, and I was like, oh, that's cool. At least it's especially a close after, game, you know. <laughs> like, especially after Comey's letter, and especially after the fucking Stalvo from WikiLeaks. I, I like I knew I'm like this is this is going to be close and every poll had it like all the national polls had it almost exactly right if you go to mm-hmm. real clear politics their average was within like not even a percentage point of what the popular vote ended up being so all this nonsense about all the polls were wrong like some of the state polls were flawed obviously but the national oh, poll pretty yeah, much called it exactly polls honest. were like it's the state polls that were really really horrible like a lot of the D yeah. plus ten ones that were really misrepresentational of the situation like you could yeah, it was yeah, crazy yeah. to watch that night on the news because like like as it was happening i'm like there's no fucking way trump's gonna win <laughs> but let's see how it pans out and then as it's going you see like honestly msnbc looked like someone had just summarily executed all of their pets yeah. like just they were like this can't be real this it, can't it be it happening felt, you know? it felt like a bad acid trip it really felt like a bad acid trip. In my now. head all night, as it like finally tipped, I just had that picture of Ron Paul and that gif, like, it's happening! It's yeah. happening! It was, oh, uh, that I was, was laughing crazy. so hard. <laughs> that was crazy. And since then, you've seen a lot of, like, misspent energy from the left, like, focusing on... I don't think it's, like... I don't think it's morally wrong to make fun of Melania for stupid speeches and a stupid shirt or something like that, but... You also have like the healthcare bill bill being passed through this week, jammed through Congress this week, and yeah, of this tensions rising in North Korea. I, just I think beat that, that there same are... drum every week. You know, like Trump will say something dumb, and it's like, no, 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 like focus all your energy on things that are real, things that are tangible, things that could make a difference. Melania's it's tough. outfit, it's tough. I, I just write that off. Uh, they've been pretty good about not talking about his kids. I think is is a uh, young kids anyway. They talk about Eric constantly. <laughs> but, for a while, yeah, for, the, for a the, while, Bit Baron was getting a lot of shit. I, yeah, was that's he? Because I because what I heard was a lot well, of people yeah, saying stop giving him shit. But I didn't actually see any, like the outrage got ten times what the you know teasing. I saw guy. a ton of mean shit early on with Baron where it was making yeah. fun of him for being autistic and yeah. for you know and it's like uh, this is just a kid who yeah. has a dad that you don't like like mm-hmm. at the end of the day he's playing video games he doesn't know what his dad's doing he doesn't give a shit. I extend yeah. that to Melania. Now I wouldn't if it was uh when Hillary got elected oh. it you know they ran on this platform of like hey you wrote for Bill Clinton you get two presidents for the price of one and she was there leading health care bills and stuff like that so if they gave when they gave Hillary a hard time and they did it was like yeah but she's in the game Melania yeah. she's not in the game you know she's just married to the president and that's that's her gig I I, 
I don't see her as the target. It's it's misdirected outrage. Nobody yeah. takes her seriously. Nobody takes her seriously, anyways. It's not like she's out there corrupting the minds of the youth. You know what I mean? Like people, people kind of shrug her off. Like I it's wish. Not, I think everybody. I think everybody knows that she's kind of taking her orders. You know what I mean? She's staying in line and doing her job as a politician's yeah. wife. But I don't. I don't. I don't think she's out here. I don't. You know. Anyway, yeah. I, I actually read Hillary Clinton's book. Did you guys read her book yet or no? No. Oh, uh, not yet. <laughs> Everything are you, are you, I've heard. Are you going to read it? I think I think you might find it interesting. I mean, it it, it made me it it was like a it was like a like coming from the perspective of someone who finds all this stuff fascinating. Like I mm. I don't know about you guys. I find I find the American and the global political landscape like fascinating. I could, I could sit there on my phone and read about it from the time I wake up until the time I go to bed because I just think it's so mentally stimulating you know some t for for better or worse on some days mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting uh, but it's also soul ruining to do for too long it can be it's soul like crushing you stare yes. into the and, abyss especially if you're out of power if you're out of power are you just watching your team lose again and again and yeah. again it's like being a blues fan oh, oh, but, but, but it, now <laughs> hockey season's starting so, <laughs> <laughs> one preseason well, well, game in three injuries <laughs> <laughs> but no but a lot of the a lot, a lot of the a lot of the shit that I found like so interesting in that book was like really unique perspectives like what she was doing on the night of the election and what that night was like for her and oh, how she's it lying. Played, how I did, it played I out. I did read that excerpt you're talking about that she yeah. took a nap yeah. as yeah. everything was coming in and then she woke up and everyone's face like I am I I just imagine <laughs> that in my mind and it just makes my heart like crumple into a tiny little and origami she, ball. You know what she thought when she came in the room and saw all those like, like frowny faces and people looking completely distraught. She didn't think she'd lost. She was like, Bill died, didn't he? He finally, he died. No, 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 you lost. Said, no fucking way. What happened to Bill? Like, there's no way she, she would have went to that first.